Ah, uh, uh, I'm finishing my mini taco from Trader Joe's. Oh, that's hey, a Trader hey, Joe's. Hey, TJ's, mini taco. you know, mm. sponsor us. Dude, I wish that we could get sponsored by Trader Joe's. I've never mm -hmm. even seen them like do no. an ad. Because they, they, they gave to. all that money to the LAPD when the LAPD opened fire wildly into one of their stores, <laughs> murdering an employee. What? Why can't we get some of that cash? Oh, yeah, Trader Joe's. Was that in LA? Uh -huh. I, think I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like a criminal on the loose and the LAPD decided, you know what will help this situation? Emptying our AR-15s into a glass storefront. And yeah. then Trader Joe said, thanks, guys. Here's a donation. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Lieb. What's up? Matt, this is part two. Uh, I don't know if it'll be airing the same week or months later. We'll probably slot this in around Thanksgiving or some shit when we've got some. Anyway, these yes. are pinch. we're doing a little Put pinch. Me, hitting, I right? want to be filler. Put me during yeah. podcast sweeps week. I don't want anyone to hear this shit. We're reading some books because I need a little bit of a break. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, actually, I just need to get ahead up on production. I'm still writing episodes this week. Yeah, but uh, this helps out. Um, so I'm going to be reading you. A story, another little book, a canticle for Matt Leibowitz. Matt get Leibowitz? It? I'm you Matt Lieb. Do you get my canticle for Leibowitz joke? Oh, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I see, did that, now That's I got not it. bad. That's a pretty good little that's reference pretty right good. there. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good little oh, reference. Let me give you a little. There Thank we go. You. Thank you. Thank I you. I don't have the Jar Jar soundboard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, I got a new thing and now it's just mm -hmm. all kind of boring ones. So I won't be doing it. You know what? Because this is the in-between you this know? is the in-betweens and this people are still episodes. people are still going to be pedants someone's going to be like actually a canticle is like a hymn or a psalm or something like that it's not a book and i to which yeah. i would say we're reading another scott adams book and his prose is both mm. musical and holy like yes. the text of a psalm you know <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. yeah what I else is there completely. to say uh matt 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 what? matt what so I was just out in between recording the first episode on Scott's terrible novels and the mm -hmm. second, uh, checking on my goats because uh, I castrated one of them the other day. Yeah, which, uh, I wanted to hear more. I wanted to hear more about uh, why did you do that? Well, you can't have too many bulls or or whatever rams with the testicles hanging out. Like you don't really want to have more than one because oh. they, they'll, they'll like hurt each other, right? And yeah. we're not going to breed this one, so he's going to live a long, happy life. But he just is not going to have testicles. It's like your cat. Right. Or yeah, your dog, yeah, yeah, you know, yes. like Sp I had somebody get, get all ornery at me online about this. I'm like, I don't know, man, like you do it to your animals. Like if you have a pet, it's just like it's not going to breed. It's going to get hurt. hurt yeah. Anyway, whatever. I don't care what people feel about it. What's interesting to me about it is that the way we do it is with uh, rubber bands. Right. There's like oh. a whole setup. Yeah. Where and you basically just kind of, you know, there, there's a little pain for an hour or so. And then the nerves kind of deaden. Uh, and then do eventually the testicles like with, just fall off. Like when BuzzFeed, they'll do a live stream where they put a bunch of rubber bands on a watermelon and they no. keep putting it on until it explodes? No, that would be a crime, I believe. Mm. Uh, we, <laughs> okay. use a, we use a specific device and specific rubber bands meant for castration. Okay. But what's interesting to me about this, Matt, is that the first real powerful moment that I had as a, a young child on the internet, mm. I think this occurred around 99, okay. might have been as late as 2000, 2001, is I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm hanging out, I'm sure I found it through something awful. And I, I wind up on this uh, this web forum for gay men who are in a very specific kind of, I think you would say, like pro like dom sub relationship. OK. And yeah. it was a subset of these guys talking about auto castration, which is how to castrate yourself. And they also use rubber bands on themselves uh. to, to kill their testicles and then eventually remove them. And uh, anyway, isn't it beautiful? That as a little boy, I learned that about the world. I read, I spent hours, I didn't know why, but I spent hours reading all of these detailed discussions about the mm. best way. Because these guys, there's not like, there wasn't like a book, How to Castrate Yourself, right? right? Like there was, I think people had back in the Catholic Church days when you'd had to do it to like sing better, people yeah. had learned a lot of this stuff. But I don't, right. I think it was like an oral tradition. No, and all so, the books were probably in Latin too. So it's like, who, you, know, you got to learn Latin to learn how to cut yeah. my own balls off? What is, I thought this was America. Much like in a canticle for Leibowitz, mm -hmm. these people had to rediscover, you know, the, the knowledge of the past. And 
I spent hours and I, it, this is like, I can remember one time like reading, just like I'm going through this and stuff. It's like early on a Sunday morning. I've gotten up early to check, read, read the internet before my dad takes the dial up. We've got to like go to church. And so I go to church just like thinking about these descriptions of how men castrated themselves using rubber bands, uh-huh. which I love about the internet. I credit that with a lot of the, you know, just learning the, the vast panoply. Well, it makes panoply. a lot of sense that that is uh, like an early memory for you. Like- Powerful. It's Changed weird me. how much that probably dictated where you're at right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it had no impact on me castrating a goat. Uh, I did that because my neighbors who are more experienced with this sort of thing do it that way. Oh, I thought it was because it's just love of the game. <laughs> love of the game. That's yeah. why I got that ABC tattoo, baby. Always be right. castrating. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, like I was also like, uh, I feel like goat sea had a huge influence. on Oh, me. Absolutely. Yeah, it just it showed me that humans are capable of remarkable feats. Humans are capable of remarkable feats. It also taught me a lot about storytelling. If you go mm. back to and if you're not if you're if you're young, right, or you just weren't terminally online, yep. Goat C was like one of the very first online memes. And it yep. was really the most influential early online meme. And the basics of it is that it's a photo some mm-hmm fellow took uh, with a prolapsed rectum of himself bending over and spreading his ass cheeks so that you can see what his prolapsed rectum looks like. And it is uh, biologically a fascinating photo. And because it was just kind of like one of the more horrifying, I think is how most people found it, things being passed around the early internet, it became like a shorthand for I am a very online person. And the way you would express this shorthand is you would trick people into looking at the picture of this man's rectum by being like, wow, there's a fire at the power plant nearby. Check out this photo of it or something like that. Click this hyperlink, you know, and then it would just be Goatsy, guy stretching out his asshole hella wide. Um, Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, no, not again. All of these different bits of internet culture, when they come down to to normies, right, they mm-hmm. get sort of softened. Like the softening yeah. of Goatsy was rickrolling, right? Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. just a video of this, this bad song, right? Instead yeah. of this, this man's like confounding anus. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the guy doing Goatsy was Rick Astley. <laughs> yeah. That was, that <laughs> that's was why he's got asshole. the ass right in there. <laughs> it's right there in the name, buddy. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. Well, yeah. it's also fun because I, I think Goatsy taught me everything that you really need to know about good mm-hmm. storytelling, right? Mm, yeah. uh, open, obviously, you want to grab them right away. And that prolapsed rectum is like a great intro paragraph, exactly. right? You're immediately in the story. But you also want to you want to set up like mysteries. You want to set up aspects of the plot that are going to be relevant later because that's, that's right. just kind of satisfying as a reader. And the Goatsy version of that is this dude's got a wedding ring. Right. Yep. Like we don't know much, yep. but we know there's we know there's yep. a story going we on with this fellow's anus. Happening. Right. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere behind the scenes. Right. And maybe, yes. you know, maybe one day we'll find the answer to that mystery. We know that he took a vow before God and we know that, you know, he's got shiny hands. So, you know, that he's also safe when he's tearing his asshole. Asunder. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's careful. He cares. There's a whole world implied in Goatsy. Speaking of people who created a whole world, I want to talk about the peerless fictional crafting of Scott Adams. Now, oh, yes. The goatsy of the comic book world. <laughs> the goatsy of the comic book world, <laughs> right? The prolapsed anus of, a, <laughs> of, of, of our modern discourse. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I did. One of my favorites. So there's this thing in uh, Vegas, the the Madison Square Garden Sphere, which is the you've seen pictures of it. Oh online. yeah, I've seen this. People are doing it's like <laughs> my favorite post about it is like you know somebody posted like a picture of it looking like an eyeball and was like, can't wait till someone hacks this and we get to watch Mr. Hands die on it. <laughs> <laughs> And again, if you're not an old internet head, Mr. Hands Mm -hmm. is a man who was part of a gang of zoophiles who would regularly meet up in Washington, I believe, and like molest a horse. And one day the horse fucked him and he died as a result of it for reasons I shouldn't need to explain biologically. I think we can all put that together. I mean, I think you can probably put it together. It wound up, he was like a congressional aide or some shit. He had some job in government. It was like a weird, or he was like a contractor. I think he was like a, so Mm -hmm. he he was, it was like a whole thing. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) it was was wild. There's a documentary about it called Zoo that is very uncomfortable to watch, but we'll give you the whole story. There's also a movie semi about it called The Death of Dick Long, and you must watch it. (laughs) 
<laughs> that I haven't seen, but I'll oh check that out. Oh my God. I wish I hadn't said anything, mm-hmm. in fact. But no. uh, you should see this movie. It's one of the greatest movies ever. Now I, I have decided that if I ever get to set up like my canticle for Leibowitz style like uh, like hidden, you know, uh, a reservoir of human knowledge for people after the apocalypse to rebuild society. Mm-hmm. You know, my version of the foundation, actually, it's <laughs> yeah. just going to be zoo and that other movie. <laughs> like, that's all they need. <laughs> that's <laughs> all they'll need to know. What was this culture about? about guys getting fucked to death. A lot of horses. guys were getting <laughs> fucked to death by horses. <laughs> These guys like to come hard, I guess. I, you know. Hey, to each their own, I say. We're delaying the start of God's Debris. Now, we read The Religion War last time, which is actually the sequel to God's Debris, but God's Debris takes place after The Religion War. Mm. I didn't do this for any artistic reason. I did it because if Scott has any sort of pride at all as a writer, then he was very intentional in having these books set the way they are. Yep. And I don't like Scott or respect him, so fuck right. him. Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah. Yep. Now, fuck him to death like that horse did to Mr. Hands. Like that horse did to Mr. Hands. Now, I feel like I should start with noting that on the inside of this book, we get the author's websites. Uh, so we get Dilbert.com. Fine. Dilburrito.com, which is the burrito that he made that was an instant failure because it made people shit themselves half to death and tasted horrible. <laughs> And what? then the yeah, yeah. Think, oh you yeah. didn't know about the dill burrito no, we talk about it in the, the episode yeah he w- he made a vitamin pill that was a burrito and it was horrible <laughs> oh my god god bless him um god and his bless entrepreneurial him. spirit <laughs> and then he started a restaurant uh called Stacy's Cafe which is the name of the cafe oh, that yeah. super genius works at yeah he's got that rep that website on here too good to see how all of Scott's projects worked so mm-hmm. introduction. This is not a Dilbert book. It contains no humor. Those two are not exclusive, Scott. (laughs) I call it a 132-page thought experiment wrapped in a fictional story. I'll explain the thought experiment part later. God's debris doesn't fit into normal publishing cubby holes. There's, here's the bit I was telling you about last time. There's even disagreement about whether the material is fiction or nonfiction. I contend that it's fiction because the characters don't exist. Some people contend that it's nonfiction because the opinions and philosophies of the characters might have lasting impact on the reader. Again, like... 80%. Not the definition. Not the definition of fiction and nonfiction. So many of the most influential tech weirdos in the country's entire version, like vision of reality, is based on misinterpreting Dune. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that's like what fiction is for. But okay, okay, Scott, kind of shitting on the entire craft of fiction, but fine. The target audience for God's Debris is pic- people who enjoy having their brains spun around inside their skulls. After yeah. a certain age, most people are uncomfortable with new ideas. Like, yeah. for example the existence of turkey yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that yeah. certain age yeah. varies by person but yeah, if you're yeah, over yeah. 55 mentally you yeah, probably you wanna, won't enjoy you this get your brain spun wait to hear about sunnis and shias yeah, yeah it's gonna yeah, fuck geez. you up dude yeah. that's gonna fuck you up <laughs> That certain age varies by person, but if you're over 55 mentally, you probably won't enjoy this thought experiment. If you're 80 going on 35, you might like it. If you're 23, your odds of liking it are very good. (laughs) Yeah, this is how you sell to this demographic, by the way. He's got it down to a T. You got it right. At the beginning of your book, hey, if you're young, this is cool. And for you. So want to smoke cigarettes mm-hmm. and then you say hey, if you're old you're not gonna get this parents just don't understand buy my shit that guy gets it man that's why dilbert is uh the big hit with the kids these days god there's so much in here too just about like his belief system because he's like so the story's central character is a view about god that you've probably never heard before if you think you'd be offended by a fictional character's untraditional view of god please don't read this yes. the opinions and philosophy here's the best part the opinions and philosophies expressed by the characters are not my own except by coincidence in a few spots not worth mentioning please <laughs> please don't write me with passionate explanations of why my views are wrong you won't discover my opinions by reading my fiction I beg to differ, Scott. I think I think we might have picked out a couple I of opinions. I think we've made it pretty clear that you are very, it's, you know, you can read him like a book, which is mm-hmm. ironic here. 
I love this. I, I love I, the idea. Every single book so far that you've read uh, starts out with the sales pitch to the mm-hmm. demographic and or the publisher. And that's which is great. A, I do love the idea of like if every author did this, if Tolkien's like, you might not think a little guy who lives in a hole is very interesting, <laughs> but let me tell you about this hobbit. <laughs> hey, let me tell you about it. Now, if you're just an old fogey, you're not really going to understand this. But if you're a kid, holy shit. Hold on to your brains because it's about to get spun around, dog. If you are, if you're over fifty five, you probably think it's okay to craft a series of magical rings that allow you <laughs> to, to dominate the minds of entire races. <laughs> but let me tell you something: it's yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I love it too because it's not fiction because mm-hmm. the ideas of crafting the magical ring mm-hmm. have been like thought mm-hmm. about in yeah. a nonfiction world. It is. You know what I mean? I mean I was also, that not what Hitler was trying to do? I want to get know? Frank Herbert's version of this. I bet you yeah. guys think that fear is good. No, no, no. <laughs> let me tell you. It's the mind killer. You mind know, a little bit. Of, it's up. like Kills dying minds. a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, okay. The central character in God's Debris, that's the Avatar, knows everything, literally everything. This presented a challenge to me as a writer. When you consider all of the things that can be known, I don't know much. My solution was to create smart-sounding answers using the skeptic's creed. The simplest what? explanation is usually right. Why, you know, is, why is he doing this? Why is he, why is he explaining literally every aspect of this? He knows the key to good writing is tell and at no point show. Don't even write a novel just tell people what they should feel yeah oh my god it's so funny like also so the simplest explanation in that last book was that uh you could stop people from believing in all of their faiths with a single joke with a with a fart joke that goes viral that's the simplest explanation you might be getting occam's razor wrong (laughs) yeah i don't think he understands occam's razor (laughs) but it's you know for him i i'm glad he's like almost Humble because he's just like, you know, listen, I'll admit that I'm not the smartest person in the world, but uh, I get around that fallacy. Mm -hmm. I get around that by like saying smart things like fart joke can save people by making them not believe in God. Yeah. Fart joke brain big. Yeah. yeah, Fart joke brain big. (laughs) That's that is I'm going to get on Goodreads and review Mm -hmm. this. (laughs) (laughs) Stars, fart joke, fart brain joke big. Burn big. God uh, dead fart joke now. Man, so this does the the chapter one for this has the same name as if you were to do a book about Mister Hands, mm. the package. Oh, here we go. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Very good. Not bad. Like Put that joke in our canticle for Leibowitz storehouse of human achievement. Yeah. The rain made everything sound different. The engine of my delivery van, the traffic as it rolled by in a film of fallen clouds, the occasional dull honk. I didn't have a great job, but it wasn't bad either. I knew the city so well that I could lose myself in thought and still do the work, still get paid, still have plenty of time for myself. So he's a delivery man. That's our character. He's about to go meet the avatar. He's going to drop a package off, yada, mm-hmm. yada, 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 yada. Oh, wow, there is a fun bit about driving in San Francisco here where he's like, if you think too hard, you overshoot your target and end up at the pier or the tenderloin. If you relax and let the city help, the destination does all the work for you. I, I don't know, man. I've driven a lot in San Francisco. It's actually pretty hard to accidentally wind up at the pier. No, yeah, you but, definitely yeah, will not <laughs> accidentally get to the you pier. Will, you will get to the pier because you mistakenly thought it would be easier to do that than take an Uber or take mm-hmm. like the mass transit. And then you'll realize you have to park at the pier, which right, is a fucking yeah. nightmare. Yeah, and you'll hate yourself. Luck. Stay yeah. away from the pier. Avoid yeah. the pier at all costs. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Tenderloin's fine. He gets to the delivery. Yeah, he, he knocks on the door and he's going to meet the avatar. The old man, that's chapter two. I figured I would leave the package inside the door and sign the customer's name. I had signed for customers before. No one had complained yet. It was a firing offense, but that only happened if you got caught. Inside, I could see a long, dark hallway with red faux-textured walls lined with huge, illuminated paintings. At the end was a half-open door to a room that hosted a flickery... Yeah, God. Okay. Uh, If he's so smart, how come his door is already open? Yeah, how come his door is already open? Well, because he's been expecting this guy. I was startled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the avatar's like, I've been expecting you. You know, one of those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sitting there naked with a yeah. towel around him, just like yeah. <laughs> rubbing his crotch. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
so he tells the avatar he's got a package that this guy needs to sign for. And then the guy does a uh, mysterious genius old man stuff and asks him, if you toss a coin a thousand times, how often will it come up heads? The elderly are spooky when they degenerate into reflections of their younger selves. They say things that make sense at some grammatical level, but it's not always connected to reality. I remember my grandfather in his declining years how he spoke in non sequiturs. It was best to play along. About 50% of the time, I answered before changing the subject, I need a signature for this package. Why? Well, I said, measuring how much information to include in my response, the person who sent the package wants a signature. He needs confirmation that it got delivered. I meant, why does the package come up heads 50% of the time? Oh, my God. So first off, don't ever do this to a delivery boy. Look, I don't care if you have all of the secrets of the universe to pass on. He -hmm. is getting paid, you know, hourly. He's got like a fucking more than that. He's got like a car full of shit to deliver. He's getting like penalized if he's not making his deliveries fast enough. You're just fucking up this guy's job. Dogs too. He's got to deal with fucking traffic. He's doing these guys are overworked as it is. If you got a fucking little brain puzzle, like if you do flippies on coins, how many time it go ahead? Just fucking keep it to yourself. Just stop. So he, the avatar is like, you can just sign for me. And he looks up the name on the package slip and it's avatar. So he signs mm-hmm. for him uh, and he's like, it's for you. What's for me? The package. I just delivered the packages. I said, my job is to bring them to you. It's your package. No, it's yours. Uh, okay. I said, planning my exit strategy. I figured I could leave the package in the hallway on the way out. The old man's caretaker would find it. What's in the package? I asked, hoping to get past an awkward moment. It's the answer to your question. I wasn't it's expecting Gwyneth any Paltrow's answers. head in a box. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's this. So like the, the gist is that the avatar is doing this like very frustrating faux smart like, oh, mm-hmm. did you deliver the package or did the package deliver you? Because yeah. you wouldn't have come here if not. Well, actually, like I came here because it's my job and I have to make rent. But whatever. We went through over this in the episodes. Very frustrating. Let's move Mind on. Mind jujitsu. We like yeah. to call it in smart guy circles. The, the delivery man's mind has been tickled by the yeah. avatar's brilliant who delivered the package? Was yeah, you he's, he's, the package he's delivery? saying who's on first, and I'm thinking that she's saying who, but it's a guy. There's a guy named who. It's just, this it's guy's a, spoiler. a genius. This whole thing is a Socratic dialogue. So the whole mm-hmm. plot is just the two of them talking in a room, which is why this will be shorter than our than the epic about uh, the religion war. But let's. Uh, I just want to, I just want to come back. I, I was muted, but like a minute and a half ago, Matt made. I, Matt made a funny, and I want to acknowledge that. Oh, did did I, I miss did? Matt's funny? Yeah. What was it? I went, I I I, I gave you like a, <laughs> and you didn't get to hear it because I was oh. muted. And so, oh, thank a, God. So, so I wanted to come back up to give it to you. I don't know what I said, <laughs> you but said I said something fucking... about smart guys, and I was like, <laughs> hell yeah, man, yeah. hell yeah, good for you, fuck good for yeah, you. yeah, good for you. I like when people. I just wanted well, to let acknowledge. Me know that. So, yeah. I appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. it. We're not telling you, the listener, what the joke was that made her laugh. Yeah. You know? Nobody, yeah. nobody's saying shit. Go, yeah, go right in if it also made yeah. you laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let us let us know which joke you think Sophie was laughing at. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dude, I need a Sophie in my life, man. I need someone who's just like, like <laughs> who will be like, hey, by the way, a few mm-hmm. minutes ago. You fucking killed that. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I do that to people and I'm just lying, you know, and then they oh, wonder nice. for the rest of their lives, like what it was they said that was smart or funny. <laughs> and I, yeah. they think I'm being nice. So they like me, but I'm really just gaslighting them. I like I'm that. actually just trying to damage their brains. Yeah. Bro, are you, are you the avatar? Uh huh. Is yeah. this about oh. you? And the avatar is a fucking prick. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> It's time for yeah. ads, I think. Sophie, you know what is the avatar of capitalism? Mm. Is the sponsors of Behind the Bastards, you know? Unless you have but, coolers and media, then ha ha ha, no. Then you get it n- free. N- n- no ads, ha ha ha. Paying us money to listen to this ad free on Cooler Zone Media is equivalent to being chosen by the avatar during your delivery drive. Couldn't agree more. To to inherit his wisdom. So, yeah, you know. This package is for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you subscribe to Cooler Zone Media, you can pretend that Matt Lieb and I invited mm-hmm. you into our home that we yeah. share together in order to teach you our wisdom in front of a crackling fire. You're allowed to do that. And our wisdom is just doing Abbott and Costello bits, but uh-huh. like smart. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and you do them smart. I do them badly because I can only kind of <laughs> remember who's on first. And I think yeah. the the mummy movie they were in. That's all I got. The yeah. mummy, the mummy yeah. movie. That's the real smart guy movie. Yeah, yeah. I watched part of that one morning when I got up early to watch the uh, the CGI Starship Troopers show that was uh-huh. only on on like six a.m. back in the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, great, great show. Uh, both of them, both of them. And we're back. Matt, did you ever watch the CGI Starship Troopers show? No, I didn't even really know Nobody about did. it. Until you Nobody did. Nobody did. <laughs> Wild That's awesome. Shit. Yeah. What was was it also a satire or were they like no? no this is cool, it was let's like pretty close to aspects of the book. Uh, mm. It was closer to the book than the show, but also did its own thing. I haven't mm-hmm. watched it in twenty five years, but I remember it being pretty cool. Uh, that said, awesome. it was easier to impress me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is before yeah. you saw Goatsy and Mr. Hands. Uh, this was right around when I saw Goatsy. Okay, okay. This was okay. probably before Mr. Hands, though. Oh, okay, okay. It is. I do wonder what it did to me and so many other members of my generation. Just like watching a video where a man gets fucked to death by a horse as a little kid. It did something to me. And because like somebody tricked me into watching it. Right. Yep. Because Yeah. Just like, huh? Yeah. No, it definitely for me. I was just yeah. like, all right. So avoid horses. <laughs> so avoid horses. Yeah. Well, it was also this thing where like. It was the first thing I can remember where I was like. Well, I probably can't talk to my parents about this. Like, if yeah. I if I ask them about this video, I'm not going to be allowed on the internet anymore. Right, exactly. So there's, I'm just keeping this one from them, right? Like, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. It was, uh, in fact, I think I did the exact same thing, and I'm not sure, but I mm-hmm. low key blame that mm-hmm. for uh, my eventual drug addiction because eventually I started keeping more secrets. Like first yeah. it was Mr. Hands, then it was mm-hmm. Tub Girl, then mm-hmm. it was Dilaudid. You know, God. And that's how it goes. Can you imagine trying to ask your parents about Tub Girl as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> or Lemon Party? Holy shit. I don't even know. I, I don't even know how to describe that to the listener. Well, Lemon Party is a bunch of old people having an orgy. I don't, yeah. I'm not going to try to describe Tub Girl. You, you don't need that in your head if you haven't already seen it. If yeah. you have, then you just, the minute I said the words, even if you don't have a visual memory, a perfectly clear photo of it popped up in your head. Like yeah. if you're driving, you just veered off the fucking road right now. Yes, yes. And we're sorry about that, but we also apologize. we're not liable for it. Legally, it's not our fault. It's, yes, uh, we are it's safe from legal fucking, liability. Uh, who was it? What was it that made used to make web forums? What was the PHP or something like that? I forget the name of the online underlying software. Whatever, fuck it. It doesn't matter. Chapter two. After this, uh, this delivery boy has decided to stay and talk to the avatar. Is your free will? Do you believe in God? The old man asked, as if we had known each other forever, but had somehow neglected to discuss that one topic. Oh I my assume God. He- I'm sorry, but this is like everything. It's like he saw the Matrix. Yeah. And he really only liked the scene where they're sitting on the leather couches. And he was like, that whole, let's make that the whole book. Yeah. It's also like, you know, this is, this, I'm actually, the way I'm doing it, it has, is more earned than the fucking. <laughs> way he wrote it because sure. this is the first book in the series we know nothing about the avatar there's no like when you get that scene exposition dumps are always kind of a dicey thing in fiction right it's an easy to make that kind of like shitty writing mm-hmm. like uh you have to be very careful with it and that's why we remember stuff like that scene in the matrix because it's earned pretty well yes. but like yes. you are you are as hungry for Neo for answers to those questions as, right. as he is when we get to that, that point, this is just like, a, we, none of this is earned. I don't care what this old man has to say. He's done nothing to impress me. He has not set up that he knows again, even a slightly better version of this would have like, there be a conflict that he's solved. Maybe like right. the one that we get in the religion war. And then, you know, we, but even then, I'm not that interested in this old man. But either yeah, way, whatever. I mean, the, so far, all that he has done is uh, invite Irritate. a. Yeah, is is yeah, he's irritated. Cost he's a gonna, young man his job. Yeah, he's he's basically going to get this man fired, all to do like a, a thing where he's like, uh, "Oh, thanks for the package. Here, I give it to you now." And now he's trying to convince him that he's smart, and it's uh, I don't know. It's like. He's missing the whole part of the Matrix where there was like fucking 30 minutes of movie before that. Yeah. You know? So he they start this very irritating conversation where 
the the avatar asks, do you believe in God? And the delivery guy says, yeah, I believe in a God. Of course, there must be a God. Not because he believes in a God, but because he he, he thinks that he's an old man and he wants reassurance about the afterlife. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the avatar then is like, do you think God is omnipotent? And, you know, he has free will and the guys uh, and that people have free will. And the guy's like, yeah, sure. Uh, and then the avatar says the question that I don't know people most people ask themselves when they're 13 if mm-hmm. God knows what the future holds then all our choices are already made aren't they free will must be an illusion he was clever but I wasn't going to fall into that trap God lets us determine the future ourselves using our free will I explained then you believe God doesn't know the future I guess not I admitted but he must prefer not knowing I mean that's not necessarily the case. Like, again, I don't believe in an omniscient God, but if God is omniscient, he can let people make their own choices while also knowing the instant they make them where those choices go. Those are not right. actually in conflict. Right. Like, I for Here's a good example of that. If, if you watch a baby, as many of us have, touch mm-hmm. a hot burner on a stove, you mm-hmm. know the baby's going to hurt themselves. Right. But they are still exercising their free will in touching that burner. That's right. And God is letting it happen. Mm-hmm. God is, that's the reason why my baby keeps burning herself. Yeah. I tell her, it's not me, it's God, as I put her hand on the, just kidding, everyone. Yeah. Just kidding. No, do not no, abuse no, no. my baby. Don't don't hurt a baby. But I will say, I can't not, whenever I listen to these atheist arguments, because I was raised right, Robert, Christian. Robert, don't hurt what? a baby, but. No, I want to hear the but. Yeah. I'm here with it. Right. You, you, I'm, I'm saying if you if you are trying to make like an argument for for the existence of God and someone's counter argument is like, well, God can't be both all powerful and all knowing and give us free will. Like, well, yeah, free will doesn't like your free will is not impacted by the fact that God knows what you're going to do. Right. That doesn't mean you don't have free will. It just means he knows what you're going to do. Just like I know the kid reaching for the stove is about to touch it and get hurt. Right. I right. haven't I'm not impacting his free will by the fact that I know where this ends. You know, also trying to figure out like the fucking like intricacies of the rules of God is some nerd. It's shit. always nerd shit. It's always. Nerd. But this is like up. I've had a lot of arguments with with religious people over the years. This is a bad one from an atheist point of view. This yes. does not make the point that you want it to make. Yes. No. Yeah. So but this this dude, the delivery man just folds uh, and it's like, oh, I guess God can't know everything uh, if people have free will. And I believe that people have free will. So the avatar asks, for whose benefit does God withhold his power to determine the future? Well, it must be for his own benefit and ours, too, I reasoned. He wouldn't have to settle for less. The old man pressed on. Couldn't God just give humans the illusion of freed will? We'd be just as happy if we had actual free will and God would retain his ability to see the future. Isn't that a better solution for God than the one you suggested? Why would God want to mislead us? If God exists, his motives are certainly unfathomable. No one knows why he grants free will or why he cares about human souls or why pain and suffering are necessary parts of life. Actually, again, I don't I hate that I'm in the deficient decision now of like defending Christianity, but like libraries have been written of guys like this is a huge part of apologetics is like the the problem of like, you know, pain and evil and whatnot in the world. And again, Scott, if you wanted to make the smart argument to this and you want to make this character seem smart, you could do 15 seconds of Googling to find like what did, you know, what did like C.S. Lewis say about the problem of evil, right? You don't even have to go to like a religious scholar. <laughs> find another fucking hack writer. Sorry, guys, if you're C.S. Lewis fans. I, <laughs> I loved him too as a kid. But find a C.S. Lewis argument on this. Quote from that and then your character seems smarter and you have something to bounce off of that's not a straw man, right? Like I'm pretty sure that uh, don't Gilbert guy is not like a big reader no. of other guys. He, He's he one would, of those guys who I think is just like, why would I need to read when all the <laughs> smartest things are already written yeah. in my brain? If you, you were know? to tell him actually a massive amount of like Catholic literature over the course of the last thousand years has like been people p- positing answers to those questions. Yeah. He would just get angry at you. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He would yell at you and then mm-hmm. say, oh, I guess you're uh-huh. trying to be woke. And yeah, then, and you then, you, then you would tell him Turkey exists and he right. his brain would catch on fire. <laughs> it would spin would really around spin. so fast yeah. in his skull. <laughs> Once he learned about the existence of Turkey, this guy is going to have yeah. a fucking stroke. Oh, wow. And here's if you're if you're frustrated with me defending Christians, don't worry. I'm about to get to defend brain surgeons. So 
Uh, he starts talking about love. Uh, and the delivery boy says, the one thing I know about God's motives if he no- must lo- is he must love us, right? The avatar responds, love? Do you mean love in the way you understand it as a human? Well, not exactly, but basically the same thing. I mean, love is love. A brain surgeon would tell you that a specific part of the brain controls the ability to love. If it's damaged, people are incapable of love, incapable of caring about others. I don't. I think a brain surgeon would say that the brain is pretty plastic. Uh, yeah, and that yeah. people have suffered very traumatic brain injuries and retain their ability to love. Also, yeah. they sometimes their personalities shift. But like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't think they'd phrase it that way if they were a good surgeon. The, this is like a, a guy who literally knows absolutely nothing yeah. about the human brain. But it's just yeah. like, no, brain is yeah. exactly like computer. You get rid of love program and then no more love. It's like not how a brain works. At no, all. it's also like, again, this is the dumb version of it because he just yes. he doesn't even look up like what science there is chemically on what goes on when we experience what we call love. Again, the slightly smarter version of this is you like have some sort of little rant about how, well, the release of oxytocin in the brain is right, what you right, know, causes right. what we call love. And if you damage that, then like people can't, like, and that's not entirely accurate either, but it's at least slightly smarter than just yes. the region of the brain. Yes, uh, yes, like, yes. Yeah, whatever, fuck you, Scott. Google something. <laughs> this isn't, this isn't complex. We're not talking about J.R.R. Tolkien writing a billion words of backstory in his mm-hmm. fucking like Oxford office. We're talking like, like, uh, I'm talking about a region. Of, I should probably Google for the name of that region of the brain. I want this guy to sound smart, right? Let me let me look this up. Oh, it turns out. Anyway, There's whatever. There's no fucking way that he is doing any research for this a book that he wrote in a conversation by himself, painting him as the smartest man in the world. I mean, Again, come on, let's be real. You want to punch this up to be better. We're talking 45 minutes of extra research. Not yeah. a lot. Are all do all Muslims believe the same thing? Yeah. Oh, there's yeah, actually yeah. differences. But yeah, like, yeah, no, but then you have to get into it and stuff. It's just trying to prepare, propel a story forward. And as a story about smart guy who uses fart joke to kill God, smart guys, fart joke, kill God. Good stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. So isn't it arrogant to think that love is generated by our little in our little brains is the same thing an omnipotent being experiences? If you are omnipotent, why would you limit yourself to something that could be reproduced by a little clump of neurons? I shifted my opinion to better defend it. We must feel something similar to God's type of love, but not the same way God feels it. What does it mean to feel similar to the way God feels? Is that like saying a pebble is similar to the sun because both are round? Again, I don't want to be a pedant here, but there are different shapes of pebbles, Scott. Pebbles are all over the map. <laughs> They're all over the map. I've seen a lot. I've seen, I saw a rectangular prism pebble the other day, you know? Come on, Scott Adams. Sorry, I'm be- I am now being a pedant, but I hate him. He's yeah. irritating me. So maybe God designed our brains to feel love the same way he feels it. He could do that if he wanted to. So you believe God wants things and he loves things similar to the way humans do. Do you also believe God experiences anger and forgiveness? That's part of the package, I said. So God has a personality, according to you, and is similar to what humans experience. I guess part of what's frustrating to me about this argument is that Scott repeatedly lets us know this delivery driver doesn't particularly believe what he's saying. He's just giving mm-hmm. the answers he thinks this guy wants to try to end the conversation, mm-hmm. which means I have no investment in him being proved wrong, right? We yeah. have not established this character. We haven't established that he believes things in a certain way. So like right. the fact that it is, he is specifically notes, like I just said this because I thought it was the right thing to say. I thought this would comfort him. I thought he would stop talking. <laughs> that means like, I don't, I get like, the slightly better version about this, if you want to do this whole religion plot line, have this avatar get fucking captured or something by a a, ter- a religious terrorist or have him be, you know, he's living in some sort of like dystopian world and he gets arrested by the religious police. And he asks, like if he maybe if he could like convince you want to do this Socratic dialogue. I'm not saying this is a good book, but it's a better one. You want to do this fucking Socratic dialogue, have him talk things out with this like you know, religious extremist who's supposed to be torturing him over the course of a book and gradually change this guy's mind. And then this guy, you know, he can write out how he influences everyone else to change things as opposed to like, well, this delivery driver has just told me he doesn't believe anything he's arguing. I am not invested right. in him having his mind changed because he doesn't believe any of these things. He's just like, yeah, he's, he thinks he's doing a fucking Dostoevsky here. That's the thing. Is he, <laughs> he does he's, think he's Dostoevsky. He do, yeah, he does. Uh, he's doing a it's like a fucking Dilbert version of Dostoevsky. And it's yeah, uh, it's incredibly hard to watch or, or to hear you read because all I'm imagining is like uh, uh, like a, a wife looking over at <laughs> 
Scott Adams. I don't know if he was married at this time. I think he was, like, yeah, because he hadn't gone, he hadn't had his uh, spasmic dysphonia or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, so yet. like, I mean, essentially just watching her Dilbert-ass husband mm-hmm. writing something that is a thousand times scarier to see as a wife than uh, all work oh. and no play makes Jack a doll oh, boy. Absolutely. Like, this is fucking... I would this much rather walk in on my spouse, like designing a truck bomb than to hear like, <laughs> I've decided to write a novel. That's a Socratic dialogue. That'll explain to everybody why religion's not real. Like just make Fuck. a bomb, man. Just yeah, make a just bomb, make a honey. Bomb. <laughs> like, can, yeah. I'll get some bottles and we'll do some Molotov mm-hmm. cocktails. Just, That'll be a just fun Just seeing thing. that you've titled the word document God's Debris. I'm ready to yeah. die. Let's just go out, you know? Fuck it. Yeah, I think we have not given, I think, sufficient attention to how fucking terrible of a title God's <laughs> Debris is. That is uh, that oh, wait is, till you hear oof. why that's the title. Oh, I So I'm wait. moving us ahead quite a while to okay. God's Motivation, which is a few chapters ahead. If you were God, the Avatar said, what would you want? I don't know. I barely know what I want, much less what God wants. Imagine that you are omnipotent. You could do anything, create anything, be anything. As soon as you decide you want something, it becomes reality. I waited, knowing there was more. He continued. Does it make sense? You don't need to do that. Just give us the whole fucking line. We don't need that. Anyway, whatever. Fuck you, Scott. Fuck you. Learn how to write. Fuck you. Uh, He continued. Does it make sense to think of God as wanting anything? A God would have no emotions, no fears, no desires, no curiosity, no hunger. Those are human shortcomings, not something that would be found in an omnipotent God. What would then motivate God? Maybe it's the challenge, the intellectual stimulation of creating things. Omnipotence doesn't mean nothing is a, or means that nothing is a challenge. And what could stimulate the mind of something, one who knows everything? You make it sound almost boring to be God, but I guess you'll say boring is a human feeling. Everything that motivates living creatures is based on some weakness or flaw. Hunger motivates animals. Lust motivates. That tells us a lot. Mm -hmm. That he's like, lust motivates is a flaw Mm -hmm. and a weakness. Mm -hmm. Oh, Scott. Mm -hmm. Oh, Scott. No. Like <laughs> his wife reads that yeah. and just like, oh, really? OK. All right. So that's why you won't fucking go down on me. Look, obviously, there are some people, you know, not everyone's motivation is sexual. Oh, but course. for people who are lust is like one of the you know, there's people can take it negative ways. But like being attracted to someone and falling for them is nice. Most yeah. of us don't see that as like, ah, oh, my weakness. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, yeah. it's uh, natural. And, you know, if you want to be weird about it, it serves yeah. a purpose. But yeah, fucking mostly just like natural and fine yeah, yeah. it's fun and it's great it, it's yeah. it, this is it is like low-key again as much of an atheist as an atheist influencer is this, that's extremely catholic right 100%. well of course when we're lustful that that's a weakness our yes. weak human bodies making us hard yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. No, very it, it's catholic so scott clearly catholic he's just like an atheist though he's like no yeah. no i'm a guy who doesn't believe in god who still punches his boner uh, yeah. every time he yeah. wakes up with one yeah. Fear and pain motivate animals. And again, that's also fun. Like I I raise animals and like a lot of my, you know, chickens are not smart animals, Mm -hmm. but it's not just fear and pain. For example, they, they are capable of taking like comfort in each other's presence and like the warmth that they generate. You certainly Mm -hmm. see that with animals like goats and with like sheep, you know, Mm -hmm. they are, there's a degree of like tenderness that they have towards their young. They play like Mm -hmm. other animals play. It's been proven in fact that like cows They produce more milk. They're generally healthier when they have not just other cows, but specific like cows pick out other cows that they bond with. Like it's described in their Yeah, it's like they're friends. Like that is how it's described in like the literature studying this, that like cows just kind of have buds. Uh, And I think a lot of animals actually do that sort of thing, just like how basically every animal actually it likes getting pet like many different animals, surprising kinds of them. If they get to experience getting scritched behind the ears or like, this is pretty dope. That's not fear and pain. That's just like comfort. Like it's nice. It feels good. I don't know. I, I'm yeah. very much enjoying the idea that like, don't tell Scott yeah. uh, this because much like Turkey, it will explode his fucking yeah. mind when he finds out that there are cows with more friends than him. Yeah. Oh, at way more friends. <laughs> And by the way, having lived with cows for a chunk of my youth, I would much rather cows are a much nobler creature than the Scott Adams. Oh, 100 percent. But yeah, yeah, someone's going to show Scott that video of like a coyote and a badger hunting. And he's his his, his, again, his brain is going to spin out of his head. Dude, what if all that would have like stopped this degeneration of his brain was like Uh some someone sends him some videos of animal best friends. Like he could have we could have stopped 
you know, Dilbert from turning into the guy he did. Yeah. Fuck. So it's tragic. If I had a time machine, I'd go back in time. I wouldn't kill Hitler. I would show him a duck being a best friend with a pig. Yeah, a duck and a pig hanging out. Yeah. Or like, yeah, one of those birds that like chills out on like the back of a crocodile's neck. Right. Yeah. yeah cleans yeah. it off. Like, it like no, it's tongue. not just fear and pain. Sometimes you're motivated by another thing that makes you feel good. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's what because it's also like, I don't know. I, I do actually reject what Scott is kind of incompetently doing. The idea that like human beings and animals have like fundamentally wildly different motivations. Right. Like there's there's every now and then you get some asshole on like Twitter who will be like, oh, your cat and your dog don't love you. They just know that you provide like shelter and comfort and I, security. And it's no like, why do you think person. we like each other? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As if like that's not a profound thing, taking yes. comfort and feeling secure in the presence of another like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. As if, nothing as there. If anyone could offer that to anyone yeah. just willy nilly. Just like, little no. robots making yeah. you know the world bearable through their presence. And like, also, there's fu- not. <laughs> fuck you for just being like, oh, you know what? Yeah. The cat relationship is very transactional. Like, yeah. shut the fuck up. Yeah. Jonah I, Hill ass. It's <laughs> weaponizing so, therapy talk. Yeah, I I fucking hate all these because, again, I am I am not a believer that human beings and animals are experiencing fundamentally different things. We just have words and animals have, you know, I don't know, whatever Echo the Dolphin is doing in that Echo the Dolphin video game. Anyway, whatever we we can, we can, we, we, we trudge on. So what motivates God asks uh, the delivery boy. Do you have an answer to that question or are you just yanking my chain? I can conceive of only one challenge for an omnipotent (laughs) being. The the challenge of destroying himself. Oh (laughs) shit. You think God would want, again, potentially an idea you can have some fun with in a sci-fi book, right? The idea that like, yeah, God's, Yeah, but also the way to make that fun is not like spoiler. God's debris is God murders himself at some point in the past. Mm -hmm. And like now we're 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 all living in like the shattered remnants of God trying to reconstruct himself. Right. That's what intelligence is. Yeah. I don't know. I think a more interesting version of that is like you actually built by the Dilbert guy. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Not written by the Dilbert guy. I don't know. You can do a lot with, you could do a lot with the idea of like a God who maybe is playing different religions off of each other in order mm-hmm. to like somehow kill himself, like yeah. trying to fit in like people uncover that mystery. And you've got to, I don't know. There's a fun, like vaguely kind of fucking Gnostic work of fiction that you can 100%. work out of that. Credit yeah. Where credit is due. Yeah. Every, well, I guess on average, it sounds like 300 pages that Scott yeah. Adams writes. He writes one, one half good idea that he yeah. uses terribly. It's he has ha- a guy who has, uh, you know, the the in the last book, it was a general who had a guy falling around with a gun to kill him if he ever gets too yeah. powerful. And in this one, it's a uh, fucking, <laughs> I don't know, a suicidal god who kills himself. Mm-hmm. Scott Adams is pretty good at coming up with half of a good idea. Like if yeah. he was a TV pitch man, you know, he'd be yeah. like, so this, so this therapist moves to Seattle, you know, yes. from his, from his old home on the East coast. And he, let me tell you, this guy hates the Irish. You think yeah. you don't like the Irish. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> oh, this guy, he's made it. Wait, his whole, wait a second. Whole Scott, cut out everything he said after therapist moves to Seattle. <laughs> we got a banger. Adams, yeah, you did yeah. it again. Well, you left out the whole thing where the Irishman's got a He's drunk got an nose. alcoholic's nose. He's got a drunk nose. You're going to cut the whole. That's the whole point. Mm hmm. Oh, I do want to see Scott Adams Frazier. <laughs> Me too. It is funny because like Frazier is basically a parody of the kind of guy Scott Adams is. But back yeah, yeah. in the. Yeah. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Anyway. David Angel. Uh, and I, yeah. And R.I.P. Uh, Kelsey Grammer, who died right after that show and has gone on to do nothing else. Yeah. Well, you know, he played Beast. He did or, play Beast. That was actually really, I, I always thought was good cast. I thought it was but, a great choice. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah it's a good Beast. Yeah, and it's then, a good you know. Beast. Although, I, having seen the Hellboy movies too, I kind of want to see David Hyde Pierce's Beast. I know he didn't Dude. wind up being the, but he's, I think he could have done it. I think he would have been great. He would have crushed it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love me. That's why I'm not excited about the tra- the Frasier reboot. Is that like. What? There's a Frasier reboot? Yeah, they're doing a reboot. He's back in Chicago, I think it is, or not Chicago. Um, 
in wherever Boston. the fuck he came from. I think he's back well, in Boston. Well, he's in Seattle is where he's at. He, Seattle's where he's at, but when the Frasier series ended, he was moving to Chicago, I think. Oh. Uh, and I think this this new one's supposed to start with him leaving Seattle back for Boston for like the next. Where's the Cheers bar? It's in Boston. Like, presumably we might see it. Okay. I think they did film something at part of the episode there, although maybe I'm getting that wrong. But like, my frustration with the show idea is that like, I think because this is all Kelsey Grammer's baby. It's been confirmed that like David Hyde Pierce isn't back. You know, it's him and a new cast of characters. And I think they've like convinced themselves that, well, we all the the core of the show is always Frasier. And, you know, we Uh can always have we can just move him to it's like, no, no, no. No, no, no. no. Frasier no. was a fun side character in Frasier. We were there because of Martin and Niles. Like yes. that is that is what brought our Martin asses into the seat. To be honest, Eddie. And Eddie, Eddie yeah. Great, great dog, dog actor. Yeah. Man, that that's also look up fucking uh uh what's his name? The, the guy, the, the Frasier actor. He gets so angry when people call the dog an actor. <laughs> Cause he's like, <laughs> it's just memorized a series of tricks. <laughs> uh, like, oh please like that's not what acting is let's be real acting mm-hmm. is memorizing a series yeah. of tricks cry look hot mm-hmm. i get it same speaking thing. of a series of tricks mm. it's time for some ads Ooh, i love ads thank you thank you so do i ah we're back back we're thinking about how disappointing the fraser reboot's gonna be gonna be bad yeah doesn't have any of our favorite characters. And in fact, mm-hmm. a few of them are yeah. no longer with us. Scott is promising in this terrible book about God to like mm-hmm. wrinkle our brains and like mm-hmm. spin them around uh, pleasantly. Yeah. Whereas the biggest shock to my mind, the thing that like most like uh, uh, shook my fundamental un- belief of about reality mm-hmm. was hearing that Martin from Frasier was played by a British man. What? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That accent is all like acting. Not what? one break. There's not a second in that show where you don't believe he's a fucking street smart cop from the fucking working class Seattle neighborhood. Yeah. It's amazing. Crazy. Oh my God. It's so cool. British people are really good at doing the accent. I really, it's yeah. like, we just, yeah, I, I can't do that. I, it's like in reverse. It wouldn't work. I could never be on Peaky Blinders, you know? No, no, hey, no, no, hey, nor can I. Yeah. Mr. Peaky Man, yeah. <laughs> Oi, I'm Hugh Laurie. Oh, oh, yeah. That's my Hugh Lowry oh, voice. Yeah. Was, oh, yeah. It's me, Hugh Laurie, yeah. We can do a boy in here in Boston, all right? Oh, yeah, well, my doctor as big as that house I am. <laughs> That's what that show's about. He's a very yeah. big doctor. Mm hmm. Boy, I bet that we probably lost about a third of the audience with that little spree of accent work. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie shows up just shaking her head. Mm-hmm. Livid, furious. Let's continue. Let's yes. let's finish this last bit of Scott We gotta Adams. finish. So, we gotta finish. Through flawless logic that we're all totally convinced of, Scott mm-hmm. has has gotten us to believe that all the only reasonable thing for God to want to do is commit suicide. You think God would want to commit suicide, I asked? I'm not saying he wants anything. I'm saying it's the only challenge. I think that God would prefer to exist than not to exist. That's thinking like a human, not like a God. You have a fear. So like, I'm not trying to say what God thinks, but you're thinking like a human, not like a God. And I know how a God would think. Yeah. You have a fear of death, so you assume God would share your preference, but God would have no fears. Existing would be a choice and there would be no pain of death, nor feelings of guilt or remorse or loss. Those are human feelings, not God feelings. God could simply choose to discontinue existence. There's a logical problem here, according to your way of thinking, I said. If God knows the future, he already knows if he will choose to end his existence and he knows how he will succeed at it. So there's no challenge there either. Your thinking is getting clearer. Yes, he will know the future of his own existence under normal conditions, but would his omnipotence include knowing what happens after he loses his omnipotence? Or would his knowledge... This is again all like I'm high with my fucking dealer and he Dude, won't stop guy. talking to me. I can't. All, all I can, I'm getting anxiety because I'm like, bro, you're definitely fired. You're definitely yeah. fired. Yeah, no, you're losing. It's okay. He becomes the avatar. That's what this avatar is doing is he's pilling this guy to yeah, make him the avatar. Try explaining that to your fucking manager. Oh, it's okay. okay. I was late because I became the avatar. <laughs> I became the embodiment of all human knowledge and potential. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry, sorry I missed my last like dozen deliveries, brah. Like, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm God real shot smart himself now. real fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, did you hear the thing where God did suicides to himself? Mm-hmm. God and uh, Hitler both both did a suicide. 
Hitler, who is not that bad in this version of the future because another guy did an even worse genocide of the oh, Jews. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hitler's the number two in terms of genocides of Jewish people in this uh-huh. book. That's the way that Scott likes it. <laughs> that's you know? the way Scott so likes take it. Take some of this weight <laughs> off of Hitler's shoulders yeah. for a second. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, this guy, I think we've been uh, misjudging him a little bit. Let's yeah. let him rest in peace. I'm going to make a worse Hitler and he's Muslim. Yeah, he's Muslim. Which kind of Muslim? All of them. All of them. You, you know, fucking, I don't care if they're the shit one or the sun one. The point is they all worship the wrong God. <laughs> Which is the dead God who committed yeah. suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to skip ahead to the end here. The chapter called Fifth Level. Who are you? I asked. I didn't know how to phrase the question politely. The old man certainly wasn't normal. I'm an avatar. Is that some sort of title? I thought it was your name. This man has never encountered the word avatar in his life. (laughs) It's the first time ever. Yeah, I never watched that cartoon or, this is where I learned the word avatar from when I was 11, played avatar or played Eldar in third edition uh, Warhammer 40,000. Anyway. I learned it from, uh, you know, uh, uh, forums where, you know, you had a fucking You have a forum avatar. Avatar, right? Yeah, and so you have an avatar. <laughs> common, common word, yeah. Yep. Excuse me for asking this, the delivery guy asks. I don't really know how to phrase it, so I'm just going to come out and say it. You want to know if I'm human? Yeah, I apologize because of all of his brilliance. He can't possibly yeah, yeah. be a mortal man. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize if that sounds silly. It's just that the old man waved off the end of my sentence. I understand. Yes, I am human. I'm a fifth level human, an avatar. Fifth oh. level. He doesn't even doesn't even get another feat yet. Jesus Christ! You can't even do two attacks if he's like a melee class. I know, I dude. Yeah. This guy's barely got any XP, and he thinks he's a fucking genius. What a what bullshit! Bullshit, loser. Yeah, you can't even cast. Like, I guess actually, if you're a wizard in in three point five, you can cast fireball now. So that is that is when start things start to get fun. Fifth level is a wizard. So yeah. there you go. You get a little go. too nerdy for me there, buddy. <laughs> but you know. I've seen a vagina before. (laughs) 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 I find myself. Oh, that's good. That's good. It is very funny that we've turned around from like D&D being a thing that like people shoved me into lockers when they noticed my D&D books in in middle school to like people getting laid dropping D&D knowledge these days. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Oh, I I can DM a campaign one. Yeah. uh, Amazing. I've decided to stick with the bullying thing mm-hmm. now because now it feels like I'm bullying the mainstream culture. So I'm even ahead better. of you. I'm bullying people for like in comic books. Yes. Like I see somebody like an Iron Man and I just shove yeah. him. And a lot yeah. of times that guy is 300 pounds of solid muscle. And let me tell you, I get the shit kicked out. Yeah, of me. you lose but I still that nine bully times him. out of 10. Mm-hmm. But the point is, is you stood yeah. up. To the big yeah. corporations. A lot of huge dudes who are into comics and better at fighting than me, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's become a problem. Yeah, it sucks <laughs> that they all teamed up with like the MMA guys. And yeah, so they're yeah. all fucking doing keto and lifting and <laughs> reading Iron Man. And I'm mm-hmm. sitting here like a lump just going like, fuck you. Yeah. Just I thinking of new ways music. to call them dorks. Yeah. Oh, I bet you like it when people combine three colors in a variety of ways to make a panoply of color in a print <laughs> medium. Huh? You nerd! Yeah. Got him! <laughs> so he's a fifth level avatar. People exist at different levels of awareness. An avatar is one who lives at the fifth level. Is awareness like intelligence, I asked? No. Intelligence is a measure of how well you function within your level of awareness. Your intelligence will stay about the same over your life. Awareness is entirely different from intelligence. Awareness involves recognizing your delusions for what they are. Most people's awareness will advance one or two levels in their lifetime. What does it mean to recognize your delusions? When you were a child, did your parents tell you that Santa Claus brought presents home on Christmas Day? Yeah, I said, I believed in Santa until kindergarten when the other kids started talking. Then I realized Santa couldn't get to all those homes in one night. Your intelligence did not change from the moment you realized that Santa Claus was a harmless fantasy. Your math and verbal skills stayed the same, but your awareness increased. You were somehow suddenly aware that stories from credible sources, in this case your parents, could be completely made up. And from the moment of that realization, you could never see the world the same way because your reality had changed. I guess it did. And in school, did you learn that the Native Americans and pilgrims go, oh boy, Scott, I don't want you to get 
d- diving into. Yeah, but he does. He does. To be fair, he's like, yeah, th- this was made up. You know, you oh, you you learn that a bunch of your history is made up. Awareness is about unlearning. It's the recognition that you don't know as much as you thought you did. He described what he called the five levels of awareness and said that all humans experience the first level of awareness at birth. That's when you become aware that you exist. In the second level of awareness, you understand that other people exist. You believe that most of what you are told by authority figures. You accept the belief system in which you are raised. Also, Scott doesn't really get little kids here because like it's a little bit messier than that because oh, kids yeah. definitely believe you at some point. Mm-hmm. But also little kids have a period where like the only thing they want to say is no and like reject right. everything you tell them. Like that's yeah. why touching a hot burner is kind of inevitable. Some Every kid will have some version of that experience yes, pretty much. Yes. It's not always a burner, but like because you don't listen to what the adults tell you because that's part of anyway, whatever. Dude, this is a full-grown man writing this. This is a full-grown man. Full-grown. All right. I'm skipping the other levels. The fifth level of awareness is the... Okay, the fourth level of awareness is, is skepticism. So, uh, all right, I guess I should continue. The third level of awareness is that, like, human beings are wrong sometimes, but you can still believe in God. The fourth level is when you become an atheist on the internet. Yeah, and you believe uh, yeah. that the scientific method is the best measure of what's true. That's and that right. you have a good working grasp of truth thanks to science and your senses. You yeah. are arrogant when it comes to dealing with people in levels one and uh, two and three. That also says a lot because, like, mm-hmm. it's certainly true that, like, little kids, babies and stuff – are aware, unaware of things that we're aware of. Like the idea of like object permanence and stuff, Mm. right? This is very basic shit. But I don't, I'm not like arrogant about them. I I think it's, I think it's amazing actually. I got to watch the other day, I got to have this amazing moment where like there's this little baby that uh, is a, effectively a roommate of mine occasionally. And, you know, like on like a, a, a floor mat for doing yoga, I have these ones that like you can fit a bunch of them together like puzzle pieces. So they have these little ends that you can put on them that are shaped like zippers, like little like foam zippers three or four feet long. Right. And this baby that I hang out with noticed that the the shape of the zipper was kind of similar to the silhouette of a train. And the baby started making choo-choo sounds. And and I'd never seen the baby exhibit sort of a, a capability of abstract thought before. Right, I was yeah. like watching this moment in development happen. <laughs> Scott I was not, is just like, you I, yeah, fucking moron. Yeah, instead of like, I was not filled with arrogance. Like, look at this dumb baby. I was like, wow. There was like this sense of wonder of almost religious awe at like watching a brain like <laughs> ch- change over. Like, it's beautiful, actually. I think that's why people like being parents, you know? Uh, Dude, but I, no, everyone's just like, look at these shitty ass kids. They don't know yeah, fuck. Yeah. Oh, great. I have a fucking idiot. Did you see yeah. this? He thinks the zipper is a train. Yeah. Doesn't even know how to cook an omelet. Yeah. <laughs> Drink your bottle, baby. <laughs> anyway, so the fourth level is skepticism. The fifth level of awareness is the avatar. The avatar understands that the mind is an illusion generator. Yeah. Yes. I love it. he's straight up just like fourth level is atheist because why because that's one away from super genius yeah that's one away yeah once atheist you are only one level away from being so smart that you can talk to animals and yeah the the avatar recognizes science is just another belief system yada 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 anyway this is all like second grade philosophy shit that's uh that's everything scott adams believes about the universe matt Lieb. how you feeling uh, I mean, honestly, I'm feeling kind of like amazed and embarrassed yeah. for him. Like, the, like, cause part of me is realized like halfway while you were describing the levels, I was like, yeah. oh fuck. He was attempting an L Ron Hubbard thing. Like yeah. he thought for a second, it might be possible that he could do a Hubbard esque mm-hmm. grift and start I a think religion. He was, he was trying that's to make exactly his own Scientology. Do- yes. That's what he's uh, doing. And I was just thinking to myself like, fuck, that has got to be. It's got to be really embarrassing to like begin the process of writing your own Dianetics, but then realize you're too fucking stupid Uh (laughs) to do it. So instead you invent a guy, you make it fiction and you invent a guy who's the, you label the smartest guy in the world. And then he says all the things that you thought of as your religion. Like that is, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's great writing. It's it is a great a writing. compelling story. Does it end? 
with him eventually. Yeah, he becomes the avatar. The avatar oh. disappears, whatever. This guy's the new avatar, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it doesn't all end of with the, the old man avatar convincing the delivery guy to suck his dick because that's kind <laughs> nah, of look, what I would use it I, for. I, I, this would be one of my favorite books if, like, it was <laughs> the reveal at the end was that he was just trying to fuck this delivery boy. <laughs> and now to, get, to hit, you're a fourth level now after yeah. our Socratic dialogue, but to hit fifth. Gotta you suck got, my dick. You gotta <laughs> suck my dick. Honestly, if it had gone that level, I would have been like, dude, maybe this Dilbert is the, guy is this is the genius. best novel. This is <laughs> like, yeah, this is, he's fucking Dostoevsky up in here of a modern era. Absolutely. I mean, why would he yeah. choose this way of doing the story? You might as God. well have started off with like a guy comes over to fix the cable or clean the pool. Like you're starting it off on a porno premise. You're not going to yeah. end it. That would be that would be so fun. If, and, and the next and then it's 30 pages of hardcore pornography. That would like, be great. He, he is like walking you through like how when this when the avatar busts in this delivery boy's <laughs> mouth, he gets that first taste of salt. That's the first experience. And it takes him back to being a child, seeing the mm-hmm. coast for the first time. Yes. The spray of the ocean in his yes. face. Yeah. Transported <laughs> through time by the taste of the avatars come. <laughs> Matt, you have anything to the plug <laughs> oh dude, dude you know if you like come you're gonna love <laughs> pod yourself a gun uh which is uh sopranos and the wire rewatch podcast we got through all of the sopranos and now we're at season three of the wire so check it out mm-hmm. uh by the time you hear this we may be starting season four which is the best season uh yeah and you know fucking follow me on instagram at yeah. matt Lee jokes Oh, right. I almost forgot. Uh, If you are in the San Francisco Bay Area or any of the surrounding areas uh, on Tuesday, October 17th at 8 p.m. specifically, uh, my wife, Francesca Fiorentini, and I are going to be headlining the San Francisco Punchline Comedy Club. Uh, So, yeah, please come out to that. It is a Tuesday uh, at 8 p.m. October 17th. Or at Voice, my wife and I are going to be co-headlining. There's going to be some other great comedians coming out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you can get your tickets at uh, punchlinecomedyclub.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, October 17th, please come out. It's going to be so good. I swear to God. I mean, at the very least, you're going to get to see my wife and I uh, kiss like live on stage. It's a sex show. Anyways, come out to that. Follow Matt Lieb on the gram. Follow me on the gram. Yeah. And the next time you see a person who believes a religion, tell them, tell them a fart joke. And tell them a fart joke and then it'll you will end war. Yeah. You'll end war. Yeah. Yeah. Behind the Bastards is a production of Cool Zone Media. For more from Cool Zone Media, visit our website, coolzonemedia.com. Or check us out on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 